In today's video, we're finally able to check out the brand new Poco Pad. This was announced at the same time as the Poco F6 and the F6 Pro in Dubai, which I had a lot of good coverage for you guys from there. But the biggest thing I'll probably say is this. This is a tablet that's designed from the ground up to be a media consumption king. And this is what we're going to be focusing on, on all of the things that we can do with this tablet. They also have a couple of accessories in here, obviously the keyboard case, the pen option as well, and as well as just basically a kickstand case that will give you the ability of not only carrying the pen with you, but also get that more, um, I'd say basically minimalistic look on the go. This is TK and this is the Poco Pad. Let's check it out and all of the new features that it comes with. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So this is the entire package that I got. We have the Poco Smart Pen. This is the brand new pen that works directly with the tablet. It's a Bluetooth enabled pen that will work directly in here and it does require USB-C configuration to charge it. We also have the pad cover. This is just basically a kickstand case that we're gonna get a chance to check that out. But it also includes a carrier for the pen so in case you wanna use that with you when you're walking, when you're going around. Of course, next we have the keyboard cover, also includes the pen holder, but a keyboard configuration, and it actually is also Bluetooth connected, so there's a charging port on the bottom right with an on and off switch. But of course, last but not least, is the actual tablet itself, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the specifications. Namely, that we have a 12.1 inch, 120 hertz, 2.5K display, and that's gonna be the main center focus of this. It's powered by the 7S Gen 2 processor. This is the mobile platform directly focusing here on, again, media consumption and lawn battery life powered by that 10,000 milliampere battery that is also powering this. And one of the nice things about this is that we can actually charge it really fast with a 33 watt charger. Now, one thing to mention is the 33 watt charger is included in the box. It is a European style one with USB-A to USB-C cable so that you can actually charge this tablet really quick and very fast. Powered by HyperOS, Pi Xiaomi HyperOS here, and that's gonna be the center cord experience. Quad speaker here for immersive sound and of course the ability of using an SD card, which they didn't put here, but it's definitely a very nice option. Here we have it, the tablet itself. Poco we have on the top left, there's two color configuration that's gonna be available here. Now there's two, technically looks like there's two lenses on the back, although this is technically one lens and eight megapixel camera on the back, and that's just the dual tone LED flash. Obviously we don't have wireless charging, but we have a 10,000 milliampere battery. Again, that's gonna be powering this entire experience. And on the bottom, you'll notice here that we have a clean slate. Now on the right side of the tablet, we'll notice that there's a headphone jack, Again, USB-C for data, as well as actually, if you want to use wired headset, and two of the four speakers that we have that are on this device. On the top part, we have basically the SD card, again, supporting up to 1.5 terabytes worth of storage, expandable, basically you provide your own SD card. One of the microphones and an additional microphone configured for both, again, for the video capture or audio. As far as the volume rocker, I'll let this focus real quick. We have a volume rocker here on the top. And then of course, on the left side, we have we can see here the Dolby Vision Atmos, the two additional speakers, so it makes those four. And of course, the power button. We don't have a fingerprint scanner. This actually is gonna be supported primarily by either face unlock or by using uh, basically the uh, numeric or pattern configuration on the display. So I'm going ahead and just restarted the tablet for us. So we'll go ahead and give it a second. Now, as you can see here, it's a beautiful, large 12.1 inch display. Very, very nice. And one of the things I'll probably say is the bezels on the side are nice enough that they're not too small and not too big. Easy for us to hold, so there's no ghosting. And of course, configuring it and using it is pretty straightforward. I have it configured right now via pin, but you can also use a configuration for face unlock using the front facing camera. I feel like this is going to be the most secure option though. Once you have that configured, for the most part, everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, you could just install your application. It comes with the Google Play Store. We have access to the feed here on the left side. Swiping from the top gives us access to the notification. Swiping on the right side gives us access to the toggles. And again, we're using HyperOS, so this is going to be pretty straightforward as if you've seen it before. Uh, we have the Xiaomi Smart Hub configuration for the music player and, of course, a Wi-Fi keyboard. You'll notice that the keyboard is connected, and we'll talk about that in a second. Now, when it comes down to the actual name, again, this is the Poco Pad itself. The configuration that I have right now is the only configuration available. It has 8 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of internal storage. Again, expandable with the SD card that we can add at the top. It is running on top of Android 14 with Xiaomi's HyperOS, again, built in here. And as of the latest update here on 5.1.2024, so again, this is just what we get out of the box. And the nice thing, of course, is that although we have eight gigs of RAM, they're also utilizing four gigs of the internal storage to give us the ability of actually kind of getting a pseudo 12 gigabytes of experience. It is running the 7S Gen 2 mobile platform at a max speed of 2.4 gigahertz. And again, um, all the other configurations pretty much straightforward. It does also feature the interconnectivity options that we have built in directly from Xiaomi. So as long as you're logged into the same Xiaomi account on your devices, you should be able to run and do interconnectivity directly with the tablet itself. But when it comes down to the actual display, as I mentioned to you guys, this is a beautiful display. I am 
running dark mode, as you could see, but you're also able to configure the actual refresh rate jumping into it directly. You can either see 60, 90, or 120. Out of the box, it is configured to be under the default, or it's more so the automatic mode. But for me, honestly, at 10,000 milliampere, there really isn't much that I would really consider an issue for me to run it at 120 all the time. Uh, as far as the sound experience itself, you can scroll down, go under additional settings. We'll see the different options that we can configure here. And then, of course, under sound effects, we can go under sound effects. You can select either Dolby Atmos. I'll let him give it and say allow. We can either select Dolby Atmos or Xiaomi Sound as the preset uh, configuration. And of course, uh, go in there and customize the EQ. You can go from custom jazz, hip hop, all the different options. And again, or create your own. A lot of customizations are built into this tablet. And again, focusing on uh, media consumption is at the end of the day, the core of what it offers us. Now, I'm pretty sure what you guys want to see, what does the 7S Gen 2 kind of, uh, how does it compare to some of the other options that we have on the market? So it's 92, 926 on the single core and 3004 on the multi-core. So overall, the experience here is, again, very much a mid-range experience. The 7S Gen 2 is slightly slower than the 7 Gen 2, but more optimized to give us better battery life. So when we're looking at the experiences that we're getting in here, we're looking at, again, extended battery experience to enjoy things like, let's say, watching content on YouTube, watching Netflix, and even just basically using it as a key keyboard and, and you know like a little mobile PC. So the first case we're going to take a look at again is also a Poco case. There's a wording Poco in there. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you open it up. It does include that little lanyard connection. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to include it. This one is different than the one that comes with the keyboard because there's no adhesive here. So this is intended for you to actually have it or take it off whenever you want. So that's why it does not have the adhesive. The one that comes with the keyboard is more permanently connected because if you like with the keyboard, you're pretty much more purposely needing the, the pen with it as well. You put that in there, it connects on both, all four on the top, and then of course at that point just cover it, and that gives you the protection on all sections, on the sides and the edges, of course, and on the top. And of course then when you wanna use it, just basically fold, put in, oop, make a triangle, and it's pretty much set forward. Or you can actually even configure it to run the opposite direction when you wanna use it as more of a drawing pad. Of course, the tablet will run in all the different configurations. And what I mean by this is we can use it in this form. If we tilt it over the other way, it configures there and it goes this way, it configures there. And again, it just depends on the orientation that you have. It'll work whichever way you want. Now we're going to check out the cool part of this because I feel like this is actually the most productivity focused experience that we get in here. So we talked about the pen. I'm going to put the pen down and the case itself does come. Let's go ahead and look at it real quick. Top shortcuts in there, of course, backspace. And we have kind of like their shortcut or function key that we have built in here. Uh, shift key, tap key, and of course, everything is configured via Bluetooth so you do need to turn that on and when you're not turning it on turn it off of course charging it over uh, USB-C so that charger that comes with the tablet is going to be perfect it'll charge our pen as well it'll charge the pen the keyboard as well as the tablet and gives keeps us running for the longest time uh, otherwise there's a little bit of a, a kind of a kickstand here magnetic kickstand here so that when you're actually using the tablet and you bring it in it actually locks in you'll notice right there it's actually connected and that keeps it in place so that we're using it right on the top, as I mentioned to you guys, the pen holder here is actually glued in. There's an adhesive backside to this, and that allows us to actually put the pen and carry it with us whenever we're, you, we're not using it. And let's go ahead and put the tablet. Now, the tablet here connects at the bottom here with that bottom bar and as well as the top and left section. When you're not using it, just put it down, close it. And this one is more obviously a harder shell because it is obviously just configuring it with the keyboard backing here. On the front here, pretty much the same. The pen stays there and doesn't go anywhere. When we only use it, just open it up, oops, slide it down, put it in, and you're ready to go. And of course, just go ahead and unlock it. If you're using the pen or if you're using the keyboard, just unlock it here and give it a second. You'll notice it there, keyboard connected successfully. And if we're using the pen, you can also kind of connect it there. Uh, and then you can just press on it a little bit and the actual tablet will connect to it. Well, the tablet will recognize it right away. And that allows us to actually interact with the device, the keyboard, and of course, all of the different things that we're doing there. And what I like about this is actually pretty quiet. There's not a lot of noise that you can actually expect from it. Let's go ahead and swipe back. And we have some shortcuts in here as well to be able to just bring in and do different options in there. As I'm showing you guys right now on the display, a lot of nice little shortcuts built in there and configurations that we can do. Now, what I like about this is, let's say you don't wanna use it as a keyboard or this configuration. You can actually lift it, bring it down and put it down. And you'll notice right there, as long as you turn off the keyboard on the bottom there's no more ghosting here and now you're using it as more of a flat experience as a tablet again pen will always work as long as you're using it and if it's not just make sure you charge it it's very simple straightforward we have two button configurations right there on the right and first button here is basically if you press it it brings up our little note tab so this gives us the ability of jumping into notes i can go ahead and go in into big one i'm going to go left 
And as I'm going to show you guys with my very nice, very nonchalant, I'm not an artist at all, uh, just basically the art of TK at building a house. Uh, I'm assuming this is by some kind of field. I don't know where, but it looks very nice. And uh, if I do want to take, let's say, a screenshot of this, I just press the other button and, of course, tap the screen once. You'll notice it gives us the icon for it. And at this point, I'm actually able to do a screenshot. I can go in there, change the configuration and, of course, annotate it before I send it out. All of these options are very nice and very straightforward. But let's go ahead and talk about the camera experience and what you should expect from the Poco Pad. As I mentioned before, we have an 8 megapixel camera in the back. We have the same 8 megapixel camera on the front, uh, same sensor, not same camera. And that's going to give us the ability of shooting 4K, well, sorry. And that's going to give us the ability of shooting 1080p, 30 frames per second as the maximum resolution. Now, that's going to be a combination of the 8 megapixel sensor and the 7S Gen 2 that's powering this. So let's go outside and do a quick video sample from the front facing camera and the rear facing camera on the Poco Pad. We're going to start off with the front facing camera. 1080p, 30 frames per second is going to be a maximum resolution on the Poco Pad. Now, it's going to be pretty much the same experience on the other side as the 7S Gen 2 is the processor powering this experience. And we have a dual 8 megapixel camera, one on the front, one on the back. Now, it's not a bad experience. It should be great for video conferencing and, of course, audio like this if you're trying to record something um, on the go. But let's go ahead and switch over to the main sensor on the back and see how does it improve on the experience. Now, on the back of this device, although we have two modules, it kind of looks like we have two cameras. It, one of them is obviously the LED and it's housed inside of a, a similar module to the camera. 1080p 30 again is going to be the maximum resolution that we have in here and one of the biggest thing I'll probably say overall is the ability of expanding the storage the ability of using the beautiful large display that we have in here is what gives this tablet a unique experience 120 frames per second refresh rate and of course a lot of capabilities with the keyboard the pen input and a lot of good things in the price point that it's coming in again it's coming in at literally under $300 in the early bird sale but even then after though it starts at about 350 bucks so it's not bad and it's a great experience now as you saw there with the video it's pretty straightforward it's not going to be the best video capabilities but again for a video call or video chat that's absolutely going to be great now images i'm probably going to say don't be the person that goes out there and take pictures with a tablet but if you do need to uh, make sure you're basically tapping on the subject that you're trying to take a picture with and of course it'll just work as good as you can uh, we're going to talk about a little bit more here here's my video that i did on the f6 and the f6 pro again this is right before going to the launch event and we're going to go ahead and just show you guys real quick i know a lot of people love to know what is the maximum resolution the tablet will allow us to actually watch content with now my video was shot at 4k 60 frames per second and this is allowing me to go to 4k 60 although this is a 3k display it is giving us the ability of going because it's somewhat higher than 1440p and a little bit less than 4k it still runs for us and again we're running at 120 frames per second so here's a quick sample real quick i'll just go ahead and jump in here and as you can see here the images looks absolutely fantastic these images were shot on the f6 and the f6 pro as i'm making the annotation here on the top of the image itself and what gives us the best experience here is not only just the great stereo speakers but also the ability of enjoying the content here 10,000 milliamp here and that processor, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to be able to enjoy content for a very, very long time. Now, I'm pretty sure you're wondering, as far as gaming, how does this stack up? The 7S Gen 2 is going to be good for casual gaming. So PUBG, Call of Duty, these games are going to run. They're not going to run at the fastest resolution and the fastest uh, frame rate. But overall, as you're looking at the same example that I'm giving you guys right now, it ran pretty nicely on the 7S Gen 2, the beautiful large display. And of course, the experience is not hindered by the speakers. So if you want to listen to the audio, you're able to distinguish where the audio is coming from and which is a very nice experience so what we get here is very much a tailored experience and one of the big things that i love about this is that in their early stages in the early bird configuration since there's only one the 8256 it was actually selling for 299 dollars that's crazy cheap for a tablet that has all of these features built into it now again expandable storage quad speakers a high refresh rate a high resolution display gives you that experience to the next level so content consumption is going to be really good and it's going to last a long time the inclusion of the charger in the box makes this even easier to charge the keyboard, the pen, as well as the tablet at their fastest rate. And it's not going to disappoint in the sense of getting you back in the game. Or if you want to charge at the same time as you're using it, you're not going to miss an alt. And I think that's the big benefit here. So when it comes down to it at the end of the day, from a price point standpoint, this is going to give you a lot of functions for not so much money. If you decide to go with just the, basically the minimalistic look, meaning just a kickstand case without the pen, that's going to be the smallest, uh, most compact and easiest way to consume, or basically enjoy content on this device. If you're going to go with a little bit 
bit more of a functional, more productivity, multitasking. The shortcuts that we have on this keyboard make it so much more functional than just the standard keyboard. You're able to snap applications, open up notification panels. Using that with the pen gives it that next level productivity level that we don't usually get from a standard tablet. And it makes it a lot easier when you don't have to actually touch the display to do any of the functions there. So the keyboard stand itself provides you that experience and the pen just takes it to the next level there. So I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed this video. My thought obviously is that this is a great tablet for anybody looking into getting into a, an affordable budget tablet that has a lot of functions. And of course, hopefully we'll get better with time as they update HyperOS for us here and give us more functionalities in there. It'll work great with other Xiaomi devices as far as basically using the Xiaomi interconnectivity function. So again, with either the Poco F6 or even the F6 Pro to do maybe screen mirroring or even transferring content directly to it there. And that's gonna be the best benefit there. It's just overall a very well ecosystem and and this is a very good extension of that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and I'll see you in the next video.